welcome to the fourth annual Great Decision Series, co-sponsored by Mead Public Library and the Sheboygan branch of the American Association of University Women, an organization dedicated to empowering women and girls and advancing equity through adv advocacy, education, and research. <clears throat> Because of the pandemic, we are presenting our sessions virtually this year and are grateful to WSCS for filming the programs. Great Decisions is a project of the Foreign Policy Association, which also publishes a book with information about the timely topics. We will not be offering books for sale this year, but you can call 800-477-5836 to order one for $32 or a DVD for $40. 800-477-5836. As always, we are indebted to Mead librarian Jeannie Gartman for arranging the schedule for these programs. Tonight's topic is artificial t intelligence and data and will be presented by Matthew Friedel of UW-Milwaukee. Matthew Friedel is an angel investor with Silicon Pastures Angel Investment Network, senior lecturer at UWM, an adjunct faculty member at Marquette University and co-founder of the Disruptive Technologies Laboratory at UWM. He is a Lubar Entre Entrepreneurship Ideas Challenge Fellow, National Science Foundation Core Mem Mentor, and is working with other faculty and staff on cross-disciplinary learning. He has a BS in Engineering from UWM, and an MS in engineering and MBA from Marquette University with a focus on entrepreneurship. He also holds a professional engineering license from the state of Wisconsin. Mr. Friedel. My name is uh, Matthew Friedel. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, uh, co-founder of the Disruptive Technologies Lab and an angel investor with Silicon Pastures um, Angel Network. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present on this topic, uh, artificial intelligence and big data. So this is what I want to talk about today. Um, obviously, you've probably heard the term artificial intelligence, but there's some hype associated with it. So we want to take a look at where we are in the hype cycle, what's real, what's not real. Then we're going to define what artificial intelligence is, and we're going to talk about also machine learning, which is a subset of that. Um, we're going to take a look at some common applications that maybe you will be familiar with, maybe you won't be familiar with. And then we're going to take a look at a specific use case uh, related to retail, which is stitch, stitch Fix. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what UWM is doing in this space. So let's start with some quotes here. This is the CEO of Google. Uh, machine learning is a core transformative way by which we are rethinking how we're doing everything. How about another quote? Um, CEO of Microsoft, proud UWM alumni. Artificial intelligence is a defining technology of our time. It's going to be AI on the edge, AI in the cloud, AI as a part of our SaaS applications, AI as a part of, in fact, even infrastructure. So I get this question all the time when I give this presentations, are robots going to take my job? And what I want you to think about is I want to reframe that question and I want you to think about more technology and automation and how it has changed what we have done over the last couple of years. So uh, we used to have uh, telephone operators, and we used to have bowling pin setters, and we used to have ice cutters. And all of those technologies, or all of those jobs, were changed by technology as that came. And now we have iPhones, and now we have machines that can do the bowling pin setters, and now we have nice uh, refrigerators that give us ice cubes. And what happened was is the automation changed the type of work that we did. And we went from lower economic value to higher economic value. And artificial intelligence is going to do the same thing. In fact, it, it's really a very interesting time in terms of technology, and I think it's analogous to the birth of the modern web. It's analogous to birth of uh, uh, mobile and social media. And there's going to be all these companies and organizations that are going to be built out of this. So it will change and disrupt the type of work that we do, but we just have to recognize that and be astute of it. So. Um, if you're a business leader, you can't stop from picking up a, a business publication and seeing about how companies are fretting to be um, you know, a tech company, it's killing them, or um, artificial intelligence in an arms race. This is a Wall Street Journal article. This is a Forbes article. And again, there's a lot of hype associated with this new technology. So what Garner does is it creates what's called a, a technology hype cycle. And this is actually from 2018. 
And what they do is they map out where the technologies are in terms of the actual applications versus what the expectations are or lack of expectations are. So we go through um, innovation triggers, the trough of disillusionment, and then the slope of actual um, applications that work. And what you're gonna see is that there's a variety of technologies that are two to 10 years out. And they map this for a variety of different technologies as well, not just artificial intelligence. Um, but what you're gonna see is that some of the things like um, virtual assistants, I use my Alexa device on a daily basis, are within the realm of the possibilities um, that we can uh, see right now. So I have students that are working on voice applications right now for uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Some of these technologies are gonna be way far out. So self-driving uh, level four autonomous vehicles are more than 10 years out. Um, and that would be a car that drives itself with a person in the driver's seat. So we just have to be aware of where we are in terms of the hype cycle for some of these technologies. And I love this slide because um, it talks about uh, we're very close to the peak in FinTech with more than 10,000 startups um, jumping on this particular boom. And again, I, I said it's analogous kind of to the birth of the web. And what I mean by that is there's gonna be all these companies and organizations that are going to create uh, new products and services around artificial intelligence. And if you remember back to the dot-com era, we have amazon.com and we have pets.com. One very successful, one not very successful. In the next five to 10 years, we're not gonna have uh, 10,000 FinTech companies. We're gonna have a much smaller amount of those. Some of those are gonna be very successful. And they're gonna, it's gonna mean that we're gonna have really great products and services that um, come out of that, that genre. So we just need to be astute of um, the circumstance in that area. Uh, okay, so let's have a definition of what artificial intelligence is. And this is very simple. Um, it's a simulation of human intelligence processed by machines, especially computers. Um, it's learning and reasoning. And if you want even a simpler definition, let's take a look at it. It's a program that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. And that is the distinction that we're gonna have. It's not a program that we have conditional expressions in and if else or um, some type of condition where um, an A or B. It can learn from either data or from experiences or something that we're feeding that particular application. That is the distinction for artificial intelligence. So how about some characteristics of those? So autonomy, the ability to perform a task without supervision. That's why we call it self-driving autonomous vehicles. How about adaptivity, the ability to improve performances from experiences? Again, we can fill the, uh, uh, feed our programs uh, pictures or experiences, and it can learn from that, and then it can uh, grow its knowledge base and adapt because of that. So let, let's talk about the taxonomy uh, of AI. And in a bigger circle, you're going to have computer science or information studies, that's the school that I'm from, from UWM. Within that circle, you're going to have artificial intelligence, Within that circle, you're gonna have machine learning. We'll define that in a second. And within that uh, circle, you're gonna have deep learning, which is like the technology behind um, self-driving uh, vehicles. And then we have another circle um, over on the right-hand side, which is going to be data science. And we've had uh, data science for a long time. If you do linear regression, that's data science. Companies have been doing that on their um, information for a long time. But if we cross over those circles, we can apply artificial intelligence principles to all of those data science um, applications that we're doing. And then we're, we're getting uh, even greater knowledge out of that particular area. So data science can be a standalone item and can also include um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Okay, uh, so what is machine learning? Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to uh, automatically learn and improve from experiences, again, without being programming. And I recognize that this is kind of an eye chart, but within machine learning, there are three kind of areas. So we have supervised learning. And what I mean by that is if we know what the characteristics are of the things that we're taking a look at, we can tag them. So we're gonna create an application and feed it pictures of dogs and feed it pictures of cats. And then if we uh, present it with a picture, it knows whether it's a cat or a dog or not. So we know what those categories are. If we have unsupervised learning, this is where we're looking for the underlying structure of that particular data. So we wanna cluster um, items into certain categories. If you think about it, you go to the grocery store and you have your frequent um, shopper card and it keeps track of all your purchases. 
we can take a look at that data and see if there's any underlying trends. Is there a health food person who really loves um, fresh fruits? Is there a fish and wine loving person? Is there a pizza and beer loving person? We can look for the underlying structure of that and cluster them into categories. And what organizations use this for is the ability to provide you with better um, either products or services. So now you get a coupon when you go through the um, checkout for pizza, maybe your frozen pizza person or something like that. So they're using that um, information in order to have uh, recommendation systems. In fact, we'll talk about that a little bit in the presentation. And then the third area is reinforced learning. And this is, um, again, the technology that's used in either robotics or AI gaming or something like that, or um, in self-driving autonomous vehicles. It's real-time decision making. It's taking information in and then making decisions off of that. Okay, uh, this is my favorite quote from uh, Scott uh, Page at the University of Mis Mi uh, Michigan. Companies are increasingly trying to harness the rolling hairball of data that they collect on a daily basis. So you probably hear about AI and machine learning, and we've defined what that is, uh, synonymous with big data. And I wanna draw a distinction right here because companies on a daily basis are collecting significant amount of data on our behaviors, they're collecting significant amounts of data from their manufacturing floor, from their sales uh, staff. And don't confuse big data with a lot of data. And what I mean by that is that the roots of AI and machine learning is statistics. And here's the key piece that we want to um, gain from this is that uh, we want to extract knowledge from our data. So we go back to the grocery shopping example. We want to look for patterns inside of that data so that we can provide the type of items that people want from the grocery store. So the key is um, uh, we want to extract knowledge from the data that we are collecting. Okay, so how can businesses use AI? Well, it's going to change the way that we understand and interact with our customers. We're going to offer more intelligence products and services. We're going to improve and automate our business processes. All of these are possible with our, uh, with our AI. Um, a lot of people think about concerns about AI displacing our workforce, but what I want you to think about is it's a powerful set of tools that's going to improve our decision making, our operational processes, aspects of customer service, and again, the key is going to be it's going to enable employees to focus on duties of higher economic value. In fact, we're going to see that in the use case that we go through. Um, so I want you to think about humans and machines working together as a team. That might sound odd, but think about what are humans really good at? They're good at creativity, they're good at improvisation, they're good at dexterity, they're good at judgment, they're good at social and leadership abilities. We want to combine that with what machines are really uh, good at. Machines are good at speed, accuracy, predictive capability scalability. So we want to leverage what those two entities are good at and combine them together in order to be, have an effective human and machine um, uh, team together. So let's take a look at a couple uh, applications that you may or may not uh, be familiar with. So how about uh, self-driving cars? So obviously everybody's heard about Tesla um, and this combines a lot of the techniques that are um, parts of AI. So we have uh, searching and planning, going from A to B, um, computer vision, it has to be able to read the road signs, it's a stop sign, it's a speed sign, um, and the decision making under certainty. Does a ball bounce in the road? Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is there an object? And it has, all of those things have to work flawlessly in order to be, uh, prevent accidents. And this is going to extend um, beyond into other areas. So we're gonna have autonomous drones, um, ships, uh, robotics, and it's going to be used across a, a variety of um, different industries. How about content recommendation systems? You may or may not be aware, but on a daily basis, the, the information that you encounter is customized to you. Again, this is a part of that unsupervised learning where we're looking for patterns of how we interact. So examples are Twitter and Facebook and Google. So all of those are customized to you. They're looking at your past patterns. They're looking at patterns of individuals like you. And then they're offering up a, a 
custom recommendation in that cir uh, circumstance. So if you take a look at Google, every Google search that you do is customized to you. Again, they're taking a look at your past patterns and they're looking at your geographic location. And that makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, if you are on your mobile phone and you say pizza or Chinese food near me, they want to be able to customize a restaurant within your uh, local vicinity. So the algorithms behind all of those, again, are based in AI. Uh, last one that we'll take a look at, how about um, facial and image recognition? So I'm a part of global entry that allows me to bypass uh, customs. So businesses and government agencies are using this uh, quite frequently. If a friend has ever uploaded a, a picture of you on an Instagram or Facebook, um, there's auto tagging in there. So they say, Facebook says, is this you? Do you want to be auto tagged in this uh, particular application? Um, and it's used in other areas. It can be used to uh, recognize cars or objects. It can be used to estimate wildlife. Um, and then AI can also be used to uh, alter or generate images. So there are companies right now, if you think about the gaming industry and all the assets and the images that they have to uh, use in order to produce their games, AI is helping generate some of those images for those uh, particular gaming companies. Um, whether you like Big Brother or not, the reality is that in 97% uh, of airports, we're going to get facial recognition within um, the next four years. Again, I'm part of Global Entry, so I'm already in a government um, database that helps me bypass um, customs. If you take a look at China, they're using uh, facial recognition in terms of uh, regulating um, their population. So it is uh, the new reality that we face in, in today's world. So let's take a look at a, a very fascinating uh, use case. If you're familiar with Stitch Fix, it's a retail, and I want you to think about the retail space right now and how challenging it is. It's challenging not because of COVID, not only because of COVID, it's challenging because of um, how people are changing their particular behaviors. And in that challenging retail environment, Stitch Fix is thriving. It's a billion dollar company. How are they doing that? So they have these boxes called fixes and it's using algorithms and human uh, curation together. Remember, we're, we're combining what a machine does really well and what a computer does um, or what a human does really well and we're combining that together. So they have an app feature called Style Shuffle and people can go through and they can swipe right or swipe left whether they, they like that particular outfit and Stitch Fix is collecting that data um, and then again using the algorithms for um, content recommendations. So they have a feature called uh, Tinder for clothes. It's called um, Style Shuffle, and it's very addictive. 75% of their users of the 2.9 million users have used it, okay? And by soliciting millions of the users, they can provide a custom style of thousands of their brands um, at scale, which is a very powerful thing. Think about that. You can have a custom outfit for you um, out of their thousands of brands. Um, and what's interesting about this is, again, they're not just using the computers to make a decision on this, all right? They have almost 4,000 stylists who then translate that signal into custom styles for you. So it helps them get to a point where they can send you a box of clothes that you really, really like. So I think this is a great example of how computers and humans can work together in order to provide a better product or service. So what is UWM doing in this space? Uh, we have a couple initiatives and a little bit I'll talk about the Disruptive Technologies Lab that uh, was really founded to do research and collaborate in this particular area. We have uh, the Nor Northwestern Mutual Data Science Institute, which is a collaboration between Northwestern Mutual, uh, UWM, and Marquette University. Uh, again, looking at uh, data science, and we're working on a, a master's degree in data science at the uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Um, because these are going to be where the opportunities are, these are going to be where the jobs are. Um, so we want to be progressive in, in how we achieve this. We have uh, the Connected Systems Institute, which is a partnership with Microsoft and Rockwell, and it's looking at advanced manufacturing and it's looking at data, um, and then trying to you know, have initiatives and collaborations with our industry partners around um, advanced manufacturing pieces. We have the uh, new $10 million Lubarb Center of Entrepreneurship. My artificial intelligence and disruptive technologies class is offered um, in that building. And what we're trying to do is foster design and entrepreneurial thinking and infuse that into our curriculum. Why is that important? Because 
even large organizations need to innovate. They need to adapt. They need to change how they do those particular processes. So uh, prior to COVID, I was working on two initiatives. I was working on a hackathon uh, with the Connected Systems Institute with Microsoft around sustainability and computer vision. I was working on a hackathon with two Microsoft MVPs um, on uh, cloud-based artificial intelligence. We we're going to host a um, seminar in the Lubarb Center of Entrepreneurship. So UWM is a collaborator. We're trying to work with our industry partners. We're trying to work within the community in order to work on these technologies uh, and help grow our expertise in this area. So what is the Disruptive Technologies Lab? Um, it's a place where we can collaborate. It's a place where we can do research. It's a place where we can host hackathons. We can do seminars. We have um, on-site labs, we have off-site labs, so our students can participate at many levels um, in this activities, and it's really our ability to collaborate and work within um, industry in order to, uh, help, again, help grow our expertise in this particular area. Um, I hope this resonated with you. Uh, if you're watching this and you want to connect, there's my LinkedIn uh, profile, there's my email address. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. And I uh, appreciate you uh, watching this video. Thank you, Mr. Friedel, for that interesting and challenging topic. And I hope that you will join us next week when our topic will be India and Pakistan. Thank you.